Hi everyone, this is up on the top of the mountain at Nutrition Farms, almost approaching sunset, which is pretty early in the middle of winter. And we're going to talk to you, uh, I thought we'd choose a nice location, a sort of relaxing location to talk about a less relaxing subject. And we're going to talk about some of the strategies you can adopt if you get that dreaded diagnosis, or perhaps to avoid getting that diagnosis. And some of the things I'm going to talk about aren't necessarily just cancer strategies, they are applicable to you know, a healthy life full stop. Many of them are just good strategies to follow. But we're going to talk through some specific things because I've often had people come to me, and of course this is not suggested as an alternative to anything. It's just telling you there's some other ideas, quite well-researched concepts that you need to be aware of or your loved ones need to be aware of if they're facing that diagnosis or are trying to avoid that diagnosis. So the starting point is this recognition that sugar is the primary food source for cancer. So it becomes absolutely essential that you cut your sugar intake if you're, if you're in the process of fighting that disease. You can't really hope to fight it and keep up your sugar addiction at the same time. Uh, so, and, and sugar's not just about taking table sugar or drinking Coke. Uh, we're talking about hidden, anything that spikes blood sugar. And unfortunately, our favourite vegetable, the potato, uh, qualifies. It's got a 95 GI versus a 70 for pure table sugar. Because of its lack of fibre, it spikes blood sugar, spikes insulin, and can feed cancer. So sweet potato, much better choice. It's only got a GI of 35. Um, so potatoes, you can, you know, even even something as bad as a potato in terms of spiking blood sugar, you can. Some people say we should have perhaps a salt shaker, a pepper shaker, and a chia shaker. And the chia's got so many other benefits, including omega three, the highest source of omega three, that you put it in a grinder and grind it and put it on your potatoes, and that huge level of soluble and insoluble fibre actually drops the GI of potatoes from 95 down to about 40, and so then it becomes acceptable. So there's ways around everything if you must eat potatoes. So that's sugar, and of course the grim part of that scenario in our understanding that sugar is a direct cancer food. The grim part of that is they put you on a glucose drip in final stage and it kind of almost is a bit like euthanasia. So uh, just really it's not, not the best thing to do in that scenario. Number two, when we talk about 15 things we're going to talk about, and we sort of covered it earlier in one of the earlier presentations, and it's this powerhouse thing called sulforaphane from Crucifers. And it's uh, the highest source of sulforaphane is this glucoraphanin and, and myrosinase, are the two components. And there are a couple of products. There's Brocomax, there's Avmacol, or there's fresh broccoli sprouts. Uh, you've got to have the two components the, um, that, that bond together and create the sulforaphane. And as we said, this wonderful capacity to generate cell death in cancer cells. And there's not many things that can do that. So it's right up the top of the list get yourself some broccoli seed and sprout it and eat those sprouts on a daily basis. It is a very, very powerful tool. There's also massive inflammation associated with cancer as, as with many degenerative diseases and that's why we start looking at the anti-inflammatory things. I mentioned the chia seed of great value because it's so high in omega-3. And one of the really good tools in this instance as the concept of, of, of omega-3s in the form of cod liver oil. Now you must find a cod liver oil that doesn't have a guaranteed analysis. Why? Because you can't guarantee within 5% that every cod's going to have the same nutrient analysis. Uh, if it's got a guaranteed analysis, it's because they removed two of the very important components of cod liver oil, which is really high levels of vitamin A and really high levels of vitamin D, and they've replaced those with synthetic forms. And they know what's in there because they put it in there and they're nowhere near as good as the natural forms of vitamin A and vitamin D. So look on the label, if there's a guaranteed analysis, do not touch that cod liver oil. But cod liver oil at a tablespoon per day with lemon juice, wonderful delivery of all three forms of the very good omega-3s, the protective omega-3s. And that's the same as 10 fish oil capsules a tablespoon. There are one and a half grams, it's 15 grams in a tablespoon. And that's a decent dose of anti-inflammatory omega-3, a really good strategy. Number four is not a natural substance, but it's not a particularly damaging substance either. It's a drug, 
It's a drug called naltrexone that was developed specifically and patented originally for drug addicts and alcoholics and things to help them overcome. And then they discovered almost by accident that tiny doses, it's called low-dose naltrexone or LDN, um, put, low doses tend to put um, your immune system into hyperdrive. You, you produce more killer T cells, which is hugely important when you've got cancer. So low dose naltrexone, there are recipes where you can take the full prescribed naltrexone and dilute it in water and create the appropriate amount if you can't source it. But it's something that you can have. It's increasingly growing in popularity because it's also helpful with neurological diseases. And there's some good research emerging now with motor neuron and a couple of other diseases. So that's low dose naltrexone. Um, really, really important cancer breakthrough. Now, if I was diagnosed, and I'm sure I will be, one in three of us are, and I've already had the cancer removed from my nose at one point, so I've had one little taste of it. Um, but if I was moved, one of the things I'd probably look at would be moving towards a more of a plant-based diet. Now, I'm not saying vegetarianism is better than eating meat, but if you had cancer, there are. Google red meat and cancer. Look at the massive studies out of China where, admittedly, it might not have been grass-fed meat they were using, and that may be different, but... Uh, red meat doesn't appear to be that good if you're fighting cancer, so uh, particularly colorectal, prostate, breast and pancreatic cancers. So uh, I would be moving. And even if you build a lot more plants, you start consuming green smoothies, you know, and drink a couple of big glasses of these things with lots of berries and ginger and turmeric and things built into that green smoothie. Um, we all need to bolster our immune capacity in that scenario with that dreaded cancer diagnosis. We want our immune system firing at its best. Fermented foods are a huge part of it. We talked about symbiotics, combining a probiotic and a prebiotic. We talked about um, biobubble muesli, and we talked about um, the, the, the concept of making your own sauerkraut, that rainbow sauerkraut, and the concept of each colour, I call it defensive eating, each colour being a different group of, anti, uh, of antioxidants and this wonderful concept of trying to make every plate a rainbow is a really good thing that you could get into. Now, you know, combining a probiotic and a prebiotic is really, really effective, so it's worth considering. High dose vitamin C, research it for yourself. It's a proven strategy. Um, you can, many people fly to Thailand and they have as many as 50 to 100,000 milligrams intravenously over a period of several weeks and there are some good reports. And increasingly, the Chinese have been some, doing some work with high-dose intravenous vitamin C. Uh, it's got a cancer-killing impact. There, you can't deny it. Uh, and and you, and if you want to take it yourself, um, liposomal vitamin C at high doses is not as good, but it's pretty good. So that's one option. Number eight is the fact that many of us are deficient in B vitamins. It's one of the generally generalised deficiencies for a whole variety of reasons. Uh, and all of them play a role in detoxification and immunity. And taking a good B complex every morning is really kind of an essential for most people. Now, if you uh, had been tested and knew that you were deficient in B6 or B12 or whatever, just remember that they don't work by themselves. They work in concert with the other B vitamins. And if you're taking B6, which is 100 milligrams a day is the kind of ratio you'd take, then you take a full B complex with it so that you've got the concert working to ensure the best response of that B6 supplement. So that's the B vitamins. Um, selenium, not much in our soils. We test for it. We're the second lowest levels in the world in Australia. All soils are deficient. Uh, the study in South Australia where they looked at selenium and food grown in that state, this is the CSIRO, they couldn't find a part per billion. Now selenium's huge for your immune system, it's huge for your detoxification system, which is pretty important, particularly if you've had chemotherapy and you've got a bunch of damaged cells to try and remove. Um, and so it's been shown to be really good for detoxification and to slow tumour growth. So the kind of doses are much higher than normal. Of course, if you go over 1,000 milligrams, it can become a little bit toxic, but the figures we're talking are 400 to 600 micrograms of selenium has proven productive. Now, selenium combines with something called glutathione, which is the most important single nutrient for your liver, and selenium and glutathione together form glutathione peroxidase, which is perhaps the most powerful antioxidant defense system in your body. So you want that firing. You want everything firing on all cylinders if we're fighting this disease. Now, whey protein concentrate 
um, is the highest source of the three amino acids that make glutathione. It's turned out, it used to be called poor man's glutathione, now considered to be a better option because you're better to keep the body active making glutathione from the amino acids that you're delivering at very high levels via that whey protein concentrated. Now, zinc, we're talking about immune support, and it really is important. Even a 10% deficiency of zinc is sufficient to compromise immunity, and you want your immune system firing, as I said, on all cylinders. Uh, and so zinc is important because between 70 and 80% of us, particularly men, seem to be more deficient than women, but very deficient in zinc. So we're talking about high rates. We're talking about 50 milligrams a day, and really importantly, you're taking that zinc last thing before you go to bed. Why? Because why are we so deficient? It ties up with a, a natural acid called phytic acid found in cereal grains, forms of zinc phytate, which we excrete. So we don't take it when we're eating cereal grains, which is most of the day for most people. We take it last thing before bed. Now, if you want to increase the zinc response, you take a probiotic with it. In my case, I take Biobubble. I have a swig. I take my zinc. Um, and I suggest you put a bottle of zinc beside your bedside cabinet and take it every day from now to the last day of your life, and I'm suggesting that last day will be further away. So just remember that. Magnesium, another mineral that we're widely deficient in, um, important for any kind of successful anti-cancer strategy. Uh, you consume it orally at about 600 milligrams a day, but if you've been deficient for a while, it's really difficult to uptake it via the gut. Now you can have intravenous, you can have injections, or you can take transdermal magnesium. You can have Epsom salts bath, you can use our very popular product Magsorb and spray it on your feet and suck it up via your feet. Um, but reduces stress levels, and that's another important component of a cancer fighting strategy. Number 13 is bone broth. I remember my great friend Jerry Brunetti was a huge fan when he was advising people on how they could counter this disease because, of course, he beat cancer uh, and successfully beat it for 15 years when he was given three months to live. And bone broth was part of a story. And part of the story of multiple things that are in bone broth of benefit uh, is that you try and make a bone, you know, when you make a bone broth together, and we're talking three litres of water, and we're talking about three kilos of bones and quite a bit of cartilage, and they're in six tablespoons of, of vinegar, and leave it for three hours, and then let it simmer, and it's to really extract it, it actually takes three days, and you can speed that up with an electric pressure cooker, and it can just be a few, two or three hours, but if you're going to do it the old school way, it's actually a long process. But the bo bovine cartilage, you may have heard of shark cartilage, and wondered at its mode of action. Um, basically, the deal is that the mother tumour is like the bitch mother of all time. She's aware of her offspring or her baby, she could call them, the little, um, the little satellite tumours that are dotted around very often uh, in the body. Uh, and she says, I'm having all the blood. And so she actually shuts down the feeding capacity of her, her offspring, if you want to call them that, like, as I said, the bitch mother of all time. Um, but it's sort of, and that's why it becomes a big decision. Do I remove the primary tumour? Because very often afterwards, the little babies take off because there's no one shutting them down. So uh, sh shark cartilage um, actually works on that pathway uh, and counters um, that, that, that whole story. So, and, and it turns out bovine cartilage is, cartilage is almost as good, and that's part of the reason uh, for the bone broth, along with the magnesium and the calcium and the, selen and the selenium and the silica and so forth that's pulled from the bones, and, and, and there's a whole bunch of other nutrients we won't go into, but it's a good strategy. Now, there are other kind of proven strategies you can explore. There's herbal teas, there's papaya leaf, which is, of course, pawpaw leaf tea. There's tea from soursop leaves, which at one point was to be patented, and then they found that they couldn't take an active, that it's a whole suite of organisms, a, su a suite of phytochemicals that work to give that anti-cancer effect. So you can, a very, a very good little strategy that I'll share, uh, it comes from a friend of mine, Cameron, who's a very good naturopath. Uh, you could just, you can do this with anything to fast track a herbal tincture. You can juice the soursop leaf, so you run it through a juicer and you extract the juice and you add 50% vodka and you've sort of, because it doesn't have to break down like a normal herbal tincture, herbal tincture where you're breaking down and extracting, you've already extracted the juice and you've instantly created a powerful herbal tincture, which you might have a teaspoon three times a day, that kind of rate. Uh, so you could do that with your soursop leaves um, to magnify that effect. Now there's a tea, uh, there's a herb rather called Herb Robert, sometimes called Cranesville, um, that its mode of action, it's a member of the geranium family, but it mines a rare earth mineral called germanium. Now, I suggest you Google plant-derived germanium and cancer, 
and you might realize the benefit of a Herb Robert tea. And finally, perhaps amongst the most important of the things that you can look at is this concept of autophagy. It's been, uh, we just talk about auto means self, phagy means eat. And this is the concept of your body kicking in and cleaning up damaged cells. And boy, you've got a lot of damaged cells if you've used chemotherapy, for example, or radiation. It can be really help, helpful to counter some of the negatives as you're sponsoring this natural cleanup system to clear out cell debris and, de debris and, and to, to counter some of the cellular damage associated with chemo. Uh, so how does it work? It takes 14 hours and you can't eat any carbohydrates, proteins or fat for that period. So you can do things. There's things that actually speed the time it takes and black coffee is one of them and um, turmeric is another. Uh, is two of the, th of the little tricks that can speed it. But basically you're having your last meal at 6.30. You can eat what you like, and, but not too much sugar if you've got cancer, obviously. Uh, and then you wait till, till 10.30 the following morning. And then you have your delicious brunch. You enjoy every mouthful because you've got a little bit of hunger by then. You can have a black coffee on awakening and that speeds that 14 hours. So it takes 14 hours, so 8.30 it kicks in this cleansing process and you've got two hours. Now, if you can, you think, well, I'm not that hungry. I can wait till 11.30. You just increased your cleansing process by 50%. You went from two hours to three hours. Uh, and this is just, just for your own sake. I go to ChatGPT and ask for the benefits, the researched benefits of autophagy and you will be amazed. So there's a little group of potential strategies amongst the bird song here as the sun sets um, that might help. Uh, just a few ideas and certainly I'll be throwing the whole shooting box when and if I get that diagnosis. Thanks for listening.